Top of the morning everyone, my name is Tiri and today's video is top 5 ways of saying no to sharing your payslip with recruiters. There are so many different reasons why different companies actually request payslips. There are certain countries, for example in the US, that no longer requires or actually has made it illegal for an employer to actually ask for your payslip. It is also a norm in Europe that most companies do not also request uh, for your payslip. However, what they would normally request or what they will always ask for in some cases is your salary expectations, which you then have control of what you would like to share with that particular employer going forward. One thing that I also wanted to say to a lot of people is that the reason why you'll find that in most cases, recruiters are always the ones to blame when it comes to the request for payslips is because us as recruiters are not educating the candidates that we work with enough to share more information. Did you actually know that most of the times recruiters asking for payslips is a requirement by the company, not a requirement by the recruiter? Or it's sometimes a requirement by the line manager and has nothing to do with the recruiter. The recruiter in that particular instance is normally just their conduit or normally the, the middleman as some people would actually say. So it's not always the recruiter that's always asking for that payslip to say, hey, listen, send me a payslip because I'd like to pay you a bit low. For most people who are placed by agencies, there are a few things or there's one thing that I always want you to remember when it comes to that. One of those things being, you should always know that every recruiter in an agency will always get or will always try by all means to get you the highest salary, mainly because that commission is based on a salary that you receive. Once again, most agency recruiters will try by all means to make sure that they get you the highest salary possible, mainly because that also means that the money that they make at the end of the month is a lot higher uh, when it comes to what you've actually earned. The salary commission, we'll give you an example. 15%, let's say a company X decides to offer you 200,000, whether it's $200,000 or 200,000 Swiss francs, so they offer you 200,000 rands. If they offer you 200,000 and we're looking at 15% of 200,000, that is 30,000, whatever, whether it's $30,000 or 30,000, whatever currency that is, that is based on a 15%. If they do only get you a lower salary, as some people make it seem like, getting a lower salary is what the recruiter is actually trying to do. If they get you 120,000, 15% of that only becomes 18,000. So as a recruiter and as somebody that actually knows whether it's a, somebody selling a house, whether it's anybody, if there's your money is based on the commission that you actually then earn, you will always try by all means to get the highest. So that is why so many different agency recruiters will always try their best to actually do get you the highest amount humanly possible. Most agency recruiters as well also normally ask you as a candidate that they're actually managing for proof of information so that if they ever are required or if they ever are asked to actually provide that information, they're able to provide it without having to waste a lot of time. And one of the reasons why sometimes from an audit point of view or from some of the past where we've always had an issue is that some agencies have always inflated the qualifications of an individual, inflated the information that the individual has shared, only to find that when we actually have to interview with the candidate, they're not at the same level as what the job is saying or what the, the recruiters actually said, which also meant that some of the information that they would have provided is not always truthful. That is not always the problem with the candidate, However, because everything is done in your name, that is one of the reasons why sometimes recruiters in-house or HR managers in-house will always ask for that proof. There are instances, however, where, for example, you might have received a sign-on bonus or where you might have received, uh, whether it's a relocation amount, where the company will always request proof that you were actually meant to actually pay that back to the company that you'd be leaving. The reason why they would ask for that proof is because they would also like to make sure that the terms and conditions that were put in place for you to actually not leave the previous company would be the same terms and conditions uh, around the ballpark that you'd actually also get uh, going forward. Because in some instances, they'll have to pay back the company that relocated you, whatever amount that is. So that is why they'll normally sometimes ask for that so that you don't end up inflating your package 
based on information that is not correct. The second thing that I want people to also understand is that internal or what we call in-house recruiters are not incentivized based on anything to do with salary. So an internal recruiter does not get any extra money or do not get any pat on the back for getting you a much lower salary. The myth that they will always try to get you a lower salary is very unfounded. The success of an internal recruiter is based on a few elements. For example, it could be based on how many people they've hired in a year and those people are actually adding value. How many people are still in the employ of the company after they've been employed by that recruiter? The reason why we measure recruiters based on that is because we don't want what some people would have termed bums on seats. And bums on seats would then actually end up leaving, leading into those situations where people just keep on pushing for lower salaries just because they want to try and get somebody to be in that particular position. So the recruiters will always make sure that they try to get you what you deserve. The other thing that we normally measure recruiters on is how long it takes to actually place a candidate, which is what we normally call time to hire. That is important based on the matrices that we normally measure our recruiters on, but nothing to do with you as a candidate salary that we actually get. As a recruiter, I can tell you that no recruiter in the world wants a candidate to earn less than they deserve. They will normally, 99% of the time, fight for you. However, you should always find a way of actually making sure that if the recruiter does ask, that you do not just become rude in how you say no to them. That is why I decided to come up with this awesome little video. And the reason why that is so is because you build a very long lasting relationship with your recruiter for the next 10, 15 years because they found either the opportunity for you or they might find you the next opportunity that you might be looking for. So that is why you say no, there's always a very nice way of actually saying that. There's five different ways that you can do that. Number one is to say, I would honestly love to share my payslip with you. However, based on the fact that I do not know enough about your benefits as a company, it is very hard to share the better comparison based on our benefits. Now, for example, in our current company, because for the last two years, we've actually been working from home. Our company pays for our data. Our company pays for the internet at home. Our company pays for any other time when I would need to actually go into the office, they reimburse us because it's no longer a norm for us to actually travel back into the office. However, you won't see that on my payslip. Or the other thing that we currently have is that we've got banking benefits where we get uh, much lower home loan rates or we actually get much lower car loan rates. So those are some of the reasons why sharing a, uh, my payslip at face value is not normally the best uh, approach for me at the moment. So before sharing a payslip that does not include these, I'd love to hear more about your benefits and what you actually present to the different candidates that you end up employing before I could actually share such kind of information. You see, very nice political way of saying no, but it actually sends the point across to the recruiter. The second way of actually saying this is that Unfortunately, based on my company's POP or GDPR policy or any one of those other policies that govern our personal information, I'm actually not allowed to share any payslip with anybody, including people in my own company. I'm therefore not allowed to share this with you and I do not want to actually break such kind of policies that we currently have or such kind of rules in our company. So if you do not mind, I'd love to go through this process complete it and then wait for you to present an offer that I think would be in line with what the role actually requires. Beautiful way of actually still saying no and throwing in a bit of policy or governance or this and that back to the recruiter. The third way of actually saying this is to say, to be honest, the last time I shared my payslip with anybody, the company used my low salary to offer me an offer that was below my expectations and I'm not ready to actually go through this at this stage which is why I would like to not share my salary payslip at this moment. This is mainly because I do not want to go through the same issues that I've gone through in the past where I provided what was required. The offer that I actually ended up getting was way below that. Even though we did not proceed with the process after that, I do not want to actually make a salary that I'm actually earning a decision maker in whether I do get this role or not. So I'm hoping that you'd actually be able to provide me 
with an offer that is in line with what you've already budgeted for this particular role. Beautiful way of being honest as well to say, listen, I've been stuck before. You know, somebody actually asked for the same thing. I was naive enough. I shared it. And guess what? I got bitten. So I'm not ready to go through that stage again. The fourth way of actually saying this is to say, at this stage in the recruitment process, I'm not yet ready to share my payslip. I know that as a company, you have benchmarks, and I'm sure that they will end up in the process. Uh, at the end of this process, you'll be able to present an offer that is in line with these benchmarks for this particular role. I'd however love to hear what your budget for the role is so that I can tell you if this role is below my current package or not. Now, this is instances where a recruiter says, the reason why I'm asking is because I want to make sure that we check whether we can afford you. You then say, no, 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 I fully understand that. But at this particular stage, because we're still at the early stage of this recruitment process, maybe you could share to me what your current package is. And then I'll tell you whether we are in line or not. Because that way, then at least we're not wasting each other's time. I'm able to say, listen, this is how much this package is. And based on my expectations, I don't think we should actually proceed. So that's a nice, another nice way of actually pushing back to the recruiter and saying, listen, bro, I'm not going to share my payslip with you. Now, the last and final way, this is a very cheeky one. I love it because of the new policies that have come up or the new uh, regulations that have come up that are governing everything that we do. This one says, I know that based on the protection of personal uh, information regulation, or whether it's GDPR. Companies normally requires that we use the ATS uh, to actually submit all processes. And I know that the payslip wasn't necessarily a requirement in the application process. Can you please let me know if sending such personal information via email is in line with those regulations? And if it is, uh, if I also do not get the role, please also confirm how you handle such information after the interview process. So let's say maybe, for example, you choose somebody else. How do you guys then handle documents or information that is normally shared differently via this particular um, email? Mainly because everything that you guys have said is that nothing should be sent via email. It should always be uploaded on the system. So that I'd love to understand. But I also do understand that you guys have got benchmarks. And I'm hoping that based on the conversations that you guys will have and based on how you've assessed my capability, you'll offer me this job based on that and you'll provide me with the right benchmarks for this role. Now, those are the top five ways of saying, no, I'm not going to share my payslip without actually saying, no, I refuse to share my payslip. So remember, your relationship with your recruiter goes a very long way. In some instances, they will assist you for the future for so many different roles. So once again, top of the morning with Tini. Until we meet again in the next video, peace.